If anyone knows where to get this little drum brake cable connector that goes right there, I need two of them. Before we get started, I got a sticker shout out for Garage Monkey Sign. His name is Gary and he's doing some really cool stuff both here and on Instagram. So go check him out. I'll leave a link to his presences in the doobly doo below. Well friends, if you've been around the channel a while, you may remember the cargo bike. I first built it and it was too long, so then I shortened it, reworked it a little bit. Well, I've been having a great time with that. And so is my dog, Shiva. But I think I want to build a new one. And that build is going to start with a new set of wheels. I have here a Sturmy Archer Dynamo Drum Brake Hub. This is going to be my front wheel. But this is going to be a 20 inch wheel, so I'm going to have to remove this hub and install it into a 20 inch rim. If anyone knows where to get this little drum brake cable connector that goes right there, I need two of them. I need this power connector too. Here's my donor rim, but it's the wrong color because uh, I got these wheels on sale, they were blue. And I've already tried removing powder coat and that just did not work for me. But what I can do is I can paint this. I'm going to show you the steps I'm going to have to go through to put this hub in this rim. Now this rim is pretty good. It's round and it's true. And I want to keep it that way. So the way we'll disassemble it is we'll go around and loosen all the spokes one quarter of a turn each. This video is further proof that you never know what you're going to see on this channel. But if you click that notification bell, you'll get a notice every time I post something new. Okay, now after three laps around, all the spokes are loose. Once all the spokes are loose, you can get on there with the driver and just back them all the way out. Once about half the nipples are out, you can just push the rest through and they should unscrew pretty easily. Now some people will tell you that these spokes should not be reused. And those people sell spokes. The only other people that might tell you not to reuse spokes is people who have been indoctrinated by people who sell spokes. Absolutely nothing wrong with these spokes. Perfectly fine to reuse them on any other project you might have. Now I have to do the same thing with this wheel, but I'm not going to make you watch that. We'll just give it a little flip. Okay, so both wheels are disassembled. The next thing we need to do is determine the spoke length to put this hub into this rim. Now I use a popular spoke length calculating website. The, the site that I use just happens to include this hub. I can just pick this hub and it already knows all the dimensions of that hub. However, it does not know what this rim is. And this rim has no identifying marks on it. It looks like an array to me, but who knows? So one of the measurements we're going to need is called the effective rim diameter. And the way you learn that is measure across the rim. And this is uh, 388 millimeters. Cut that number in half. And that gives us 194. So what we're going to need are two spokes that are less than 194 millimeters in length. And it just so happens the spokes that came out of this wheel are, are only 185 millimeters. So they'll work just fine. Now here's what we do. Is we take one insert the spoke into one of the spoke holes and screw the nipple down until the spoke is even with the bottom of the slot in the nipple. And this is a 36 hole rim so go 18 spoke holes away and insert a spoke there as well. Once again screw the nipple down until the spoke is flush with the bottom of the slot. Now come in with a digital caliper and measure the distance between those two spokes. And I've got 21.3 millimeters. So we've got our 185 millimeters times 2, which is 370, plus our 21 millimeters is 391. That is our effective rim diameter, is 391 millimeters. Another thing they're going to ask for is the offset. Now the way you get the offset is you come in and you measure from one side 8.75 and then measure from that same side and we've got 11.05. So 
Subtract one from the other and you get 2.3. Cut that in half and that's your offset, which is 1.15. So we'll take the dimensions that we took off the rim and plug those into the spoke calculator, tell it how many spokes to use, 36 in this case, and then hit submit. So according to the spoke calculator, to lace this wheel using two cross lacing, that would require a 164 millimeter spoke. Now I get a really good deal off Amazon on 165 millimeter spokes and if they protrude through the nipples a little bit we'll just file them off. On to the next phase of the project. This rim is the wrong color. I wanted that same blue that came with the Sturmy Archer hub because the back wheel still has that color on it. Now I'm not sure how well the camera can see this but here's the original color this is Rust-Oleum blue, and this is Krylon blue, and neither one is quite right. After several tries, I think what we're going to go with is the Cobra Low Pressure Blue, followed by Rust-Oleum Glaze. Now we'll come back and add the glaze. And that looks to be a pretty fair match. Hopefully it won't draw a bunch of gnats before it dries. So when you lace a wheel, you want to go through first and install all the spokes that go from the outside to the inside. And then after you get all those on both sides of the wheel, come back and install the spokes that come from the inside to the outside. Start at the valve stem hole and you'll notice that some of the holes are closer to one side and some are closer to the other. Go from the right side of the rim to the right side of the hub. These spoke nipples will not fit in the rim holes. Well, I just reviewed my Amazon order and apparently these are 12 gauge spokes, which is okay. They're thicker than uh, what most bikes use, which is 14 gauge. But I don't have a spoke wrench to fit these nipples and those nipples won't fit the rim. So I'm going to have to drill the rim out. And there's my spoke wrench. So you put the first spoke in and you count four holes away on a 36 spoke. Okay, so the first nine are in. Make sure none of the nipples are caught on the nipple on the spoke holes and rotate it. Do the same thing on the other side going from the opposite direction. Find your anchor spoke and go as close to directly across from it as you can. And you want to go the opposite rotation. And there's a start. Now we'll come back and find our anchor spoke which is the first one we set and then we go in next to it. One thing just occurred to me, I probably should have measured these to make sure they were the size I thought they were. And after all that I have unlaced the wheel because not only was I short three spoke nipples, of the 33 spoke nipples that they did send me, not one of them has the correct thread. So it will only thread on about a turn and a half and then that's it. So I reached out to Amazon and they gave me my money back and I don't even have to return these. Now this introduces a new level of suck. The new level of suck because I drilled out this rim to accommodate those uh, 12 gauge nipples and now I'm not going to be able to use it either. So this puts a pretty healthy delay on the project. Because what I'm going to have to do is get the new rim, measure its new effective diameter, and get compute for new spokes. But at least we know how to do that. Anyway, I acquired a new rim and painted it. And found 14 gauge spokes for it. 
And you see here I have an old shirt laying down on the welding table. That way I don't scratch up my new paint on that rim. So there the wheel is all laced, but it's still loose. So now we've got to go through and tighten all the spokes. Okay, so what I just did was I ran all the spoke nipples down until the thread just disappeared. Now from this point, I'm going to go around and add one turn around to each spoke. And it's, it's really pretty tight, just as it is, but uh, it's not tight enough. If anyone's interested, I lace this three cross I think I'm going to switch to half turns now because it's getting closer I can feel it okay I got my wheel all built and now we want to install a tire on it it has this flame tread pattern that I want to use when you're installing a tube into a tire, there's a couple of things that you want to do. One is you want the valve stem by some mark, like maybe the tire brand. And the reason for that is if you should get a flat, if you find the hole in the tube, you'll know where to look in the tire for the thing that punctured it. I want to make sure that flame tread has got the tails of the flame going toward the back. And don't waste your time on slime tubes or tire liners. If you can't find a Kevlar belted tire, just go with thorn proof tubes. The rubber is a quarter of an inch thick. Interestingly enough, I got a similar pattern for the uh, back wheel. So there we have one cargo bike wheel set. Now we gotta build the bike. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that wheel set and I think this next cargo bike is going to be the best one I've ever built. And if you want to see the most up-to-date progress, find me on Instagram. My name there is wildman.tech. Anyway, I'm happy to answer any questions in the doobly-doo below, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video, click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like, and have a good one.